rejoicing. Mm. I want somebody to know that um, there are things that God has already put in place to ensure that your season of rejoicing is permanent. Am I speaking to somebody here this morning? Are you sure you are here? Because God is about to change your life and you will leave yourself, you have nothing that you can do about it. I said there is nothing that you can do about it. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. There was something we read in the call to worship. I want us to go there. Uh, there is something I'm about to teach you that will change your life forever. Uh, it's about seasons. It's about what? Seasons. Tell somebody again, it's my season of rejoicing. It's my season of rejoicing. Now one of the secrets of sustaining your constant joy is to understand the law of seasons and how to maximize every season in your life. But before we move on, I want us to go to the beginning where it all began in the book of Genesis. Please read that Genesis chapter 1, verses 14 to 19. Genesis about to change. I want to admonish you to please follow me closely. To understand that God has already put a system in place that you must rejoice no matter what. It's called the Lord of Season. And God said, Look up. And God said, Let there be light in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night. Somebody say, Day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons. Somebody say, For seasons. And for days and for years. Somebody say, Days and years. And let them be for light in the firmament of the heavens to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule by the day, the lesser light to rule by the night. He made the stars also. 17. And God sent them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. 18. And to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. 19. And the evening and the morning was the fourth day. Somebody say, I understand. Somebody say, I really, I really understand. Listen, my God is an intentional God. Somebody say, intentional. intentional. My God is an intentional God. Somebody say, intentional. intentional. There is nothing that God makes that does not have a meaning. Can I get a witness here? Yes. <laughs> so for the fact that you are alive, there is a reason why you are alive. Yes. Am I speaking to somebody here? Yes. I said he's too intentional about the way he goes about his activities. That is why I know there is a purpose and there's a reason why you are alive. I'm teaching you something about seasons and that the season of rejoicing has come. Can somebody believe me here? I said your season of rejoicing has come. It's like the people over here don't understand what I'm saying. I said your season of rejoicing has come. Hallelujah. The Bible says that God made lights. He said, I'm about to make light on the earth. And the reason I am making light on the earth is so that they can be seasons. Somebody says seasons. He said, I'm going to create a system on the earth that whatever happens, that this seasons must come. But there's going to be something that will rule, almost like a covenant. To make sure that when the morning comes, then the night will come. And then when the night comes, the morning must come. There is going to be a sequence that day will come and then night will come. And night will come and then day will come. And it's going to be all and all like that. And he said, I'm going to put the lights. He said, I will make the sun, I will make the moon, I will put stars also. So that when it is time for the morning, the sun will come. And when it's time for night time, the moon will come. And he said, and on and on and on again. Amen. And that if we begin to make the years, the days to go by, and then the months to go by, and that's why we have calendars. Amen. And that's why we know that when one day has passed, it's the first day. And then when the day has ended, it's the next 
day. And when that day has landed, it will be the day after the next. Do you understand what I'm saying? How do we know it's because a day has ended when the moon has ended? That's not true. And then the sun takes over and it's a new day. Somebody, your new day has come. Yeah. The night time cannot say that I'm enjoying my time too much. I don't want the sun to come. It does not matter whether the night is enjoying its time. When it's time for the sun to, 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 to break forth, the sun will come. Am I speaking to somebody here? It doesn't matter whether the day is having a nice time. But when it is time for the sun to come, it must dawn so that the moon will come out. Am I speaking to somebody? That is why I know that your season of rejoicing must come. I'm going somewhere. Tell your neighbor, pastor is going somewhere. <laughs> so please follow me. Amen. Amen. Your season of rejoicing has come. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And then God wanted to make it so sure. The Bible says that he made a covenant with creation. And that covenant is in Genesis chapter 8 verses 21 to 22. Genesis chapter 8, verses 21 to 22. He said he wanted to make it so sure because he had not finished destroying the earth with blood. <laughs> he said that the heart of man was so evil that they were doing evil continuously, that their heart was so evil. And he, he said he grieved him that he made man. He said, I'm going to wipe the whole earth away. Yeah. And the Bible said that he caused a flood to come upon the earth, that even the mountains were covered. But you know what? By the time Noah finished sacrificing, the Bible says that the sacrifice came as a sweet smelling aroma before God. And then he made a covenant with creation. This is the covenant. And the Lord smelled a sweet savor. Somebody said sweet savor. And the Lord said in his heart, he didn't say it outside. Hello? He said it in his heart. Yeah. 
over. And when the season of famine is over, it's the season of plenty. Can somebody say, my season of rejoicing has come? You have to reserve. 
Did you hear me? Because you know that whether you like it or not, a time is coming when there will be anything. Do you know that? But God has taught his children and in his world that if you can preserve, if you can keep some things in your time of plenty, in your time of rejoicing, that when the time of lack comes, that when the time of sorrow comes, you can look to the back and say, that yes, I know that my redeemer liveth. I know that in all these things, I am more than a conqueror. For greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. That what death can I see? If the Lord be for me, who can be against me? That the cattle upon a thousand hills are mine. The silver and the gold are his. He said he delighted in the prosperity of his servants. Am I speaking to somebody here? Are you sure you are here? The trick that the devil likes to do is to make you forget. The Bible says that when David was faced with Goliath, that was a season of trials. But he had already reserved in his bag. He reserved in his bag his past testimonies. I'm not speaking to somebody here. And when he faced Goliath, he said, Oh, you Goliath, the same God that delivered me out of the mouth of the lion, out of the mouth of the bear, Deliver me from this uncircumcised Philistine. And the Bible said that he brought out his sling, he brought out his stone, and he began to slay the stone. And that stone went right to the middle, the center of the head of Goliath. Every Goliath before you, every Goliath before your marriage, every Goliath before your children, every Goliath before your job. Because whether you like it or not, 
After plenty, famine must come. Do you hear me? Famine will come. But if you have reserved, you will have something to follow. You will never be stranded again. I said you will never be stranded again. Most times, when you are tempted to touch your savings, please. When you are tempted to touch your savings, tempted to touch what you have reserved, even the one you reserve in your mind for your joy, please don't go there. Did you hear me? Don't go there. So that you will be able to find during the time you are tired. Is the reason why they say, fast now, don't wait till the time you are looking for a husband. Because if you wait till the time you are looking for a husband, you will fall inside error. Do you know that? Yes, you will fall inside error. But when you are already playing the fasting ahead, it will go and wait for you in your future. That's why you pray. Not because of what you have now, but because of in the future. That's why you pray. It's a reservoir. Amen. Amen. Tell your neighbor, pray. pray. Tell your neighbor, pray. 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 So that is it. We've got to understand this secret. Walk in this secret. Believe in this secret. Tell your neighbor again, it is time for rejoicing. It is time for rejoicing. According to God, there is no ugliness in the events of our life. Do you know that? There is no ugliness. The Bible says He made all things beautiful in His time. So there is no ugliness with God. The things that we say, oh, I have lost my job. With God, it is not, an, it's not ugliness. Why? Because it says all things. Somebody say all things. things. Say that you made all things. All things. Work together. For them that love the Lord.
today. It's still the same God that will open this door. When you are standing. 